My name is Reza Alam. My name is Victor Pucci. My name is Devin Bisconner. I am Marcus Lehman, and we're from the University of California, Berkeley Mechanical Engineering. And we are CalWave. A team that is developing a wave energy extracting device called the Wave Carpet. So we're working on a new ocean wave energy converter that's similar to a solar panel or windmill. So it's a generation technology using a renewable resource. What we are doing here is developing a device that can extract high amounts of energy from waves. So this project was born by observing a natural phenomenon. It's known that muddy seabed can extract a huge amount of energy from overpassing oceanic waves. So the idea is if muddy seabed can do such a great job in extracting energy, if we can convert it into useful power. And so based on this natural principle and phenomena, we try to adopt and mimic this behavior and design the submerged wave energy converter. So as the waves travel over the absorber, the waves create a force and we can actively dampen these waves out. So it's similar to a shock absorber in a car, but yeah, driven by ocean wave energy. And this shock absorber is our generator. This project requires detailed knowledge of advanced fluid mechanics. It also requires us to build structures that can withstand great forces over a large amount of time. Also, it's important that it can withstand corrosion from salt water, as well as uh, any marine life that might grow on it. The beauty of our invention is that this device works in three dimensions, and it works on what we call the safe zone. So if you put a device on the surface, it can be hit by big waves, and if you put it right in the bottom of the ocean, it can corrode with the sediment. So our project will be sitting in the safe zone, not on the surface, not on the bottom, but right in the center. This allows us to extract the maximum wave energy possible while still protecting our project so then it can persist for many years. So we see the main advantage and application for this technology, of course, in coastal regions where there's wave energy, but also on island regions where there's very high electricity prices. In most islands, energy prices are very high. Our device can work on those sites and provide a cheaper source of electricity, but most importantly, an environmentally sustainable source of electricity. My name is Koei Tam. My name is Anna Almario. My name is Priyanka Singh. My name is Alyssa Yan. We're from the University of California, Riverside. And our project is called Knox Out. Selective Catalytic Reduction System for Emission Control of Small Off-Road Engines. What we noticed was that in metropolitan areas, 20% of emissions come from small off-road engines. What we wanted to do was we wanted to take all of these emissions and reduce it. So we developed Knox Out. Knox Out is a device similar to a catalytic converter that you attach to small engines. If you think about small off-road engines, it could be related to lawnmowers or generators. So not tackling the smaller emissions even if they're abundant, also has an effect on the environment and the air that we breathe. So that was the spawning of that idea or the genesis of the idea. First we address particulate matter and then next the harmful emissions meets ammonia which is used in combination with our copper zeolite catalyst to transform them into inert nitrogen and carbon dioxide. And finally we have a fiberglass filter that also reduces noise pollution and then what comes out is something breathable because we've also taken out volatile organic compounds so that smell that you get when you're mowing your lawn that's also reduced. These chemicals are actually very dangerous to the health of the people that use these engines because they can cause respiratory ailments. So we're able to take our knocks out device and apply it to these small off-road engines to reduce pollution such as nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxides, VOCs, and particulate matter. And these are things that are released from small engines. Um, so in terms of sustainability, we want the future generations to be able to have the same quality of life that we experience now. And for that to happen, we need to be able to limit the negative effects of the different processes that we have now on the environment. This project is completely feasible, which is what makes us so happy. It's very easy to make and it's very cost effective. So if you can have something that the society wants and make it low cost, and it improves the environment, that's what we're after. My name is Megan O'Connor. I'm Professor Desiree Plata of Duke University, and our project is called Closing the Loop in Sustainable Design. 
Our project is targeted at reclaiming minerals from industrial waste processing streams and metal recycling streams. And so what our project really targets are these rare earth metals of some of these electronics that we use in our everyday products. The technology starts with a liquid industrial waste stream, and that could be electronic waste from metals recycling plants or waste associated with semiconductor manufacturer that has a complex mixture of metals in it. A lot of metals recycling currently uses a lot of different metal properties to try and recycle them, so they use solubility, ferromagnetism, and color to separate. But what we're using is the differences in their electrochemical reduction potentials. So what we're doing is applying a specific voltage to try and reduce these metals out of their soluble form in the waste stream into their insoluble form, right, reducing them into their zero valent form on the filter surface. Our technology relies on carbon nanotubes because they have a high surface area and they're electrochemically conductive. And these carbon nanotubes are this conductive filter that we're using. So these are the filters that you see in our lab. And we have them stacked in series because in theory we would be able to separate these metals based on their differences in their redox potential. So really using the differences in their electrochemistry. And each of those filters has a different voltage applied and each of those metals has a particular desire to be reduced at certain voltages. And that lets us select individual metals out of the waste stream that we can then reuse in continued manufacture. This is a real need in industry right now. We don't have a technology that's capable of recycling any of these valuable materials at any high rate. And our ultimate goal is to actually be able to close the loop in industrial manufacturing processes where waste streams are no longer waste streams, but instead renewable resources. We would have enhanced manufacturing by using some of these recycled materials and we would decrease the amount of environmental damage associated with mining and refining and decrease the socio-political issues surrounding the mining of these rare earth metals from undesirable locations. So the project is trying to answer important questions in advanced technologies, but furthermore, it's trying to do so in a way that sets an example for sustainable innovation globally.